everyone. Welcome to Asia Down Under. Today we look into biotechnology and the future. Genetic engineering and genetic modification is a sensitive issue, but many of us are not quite au fait with the whole subject matter. Pushpa gives us GE 101. Human beings. There are many different kinds of us in the world, but one thing we all have in common is our genes. We all have them and they are what make us unique. Genetic engineering is a topic that is becoming increasingly important in our society. Yet, very few of us are able to say that we're clear about the issue. So what exactly is genetic engineering and who does it impact? Genetic engineering would involve changing some of these genes in our cells to try and get them to do different things. So here we've got a model of a complex cell undergoing division and a complex cell would be an animal or a plant cell. And this process of cell division is called mitosis. And what we have here is a cell with the DNA and you can see it um, looks like beads on a string which is the sort of structure of DNA. Um, in the chromosomes. Now with genetic engineering a gene would be inserted into that DNA and if the cell is able to undergo division then um, you can see the chromosomes and how they, they process through that cell division to end up with two daughter cells that are genetically identical carrying that gene you inserted into the original parent cell. Thomas Backstrom from the Maligan Institute of Medical Research in Wellington believes that genetic engineering might be able to help find a cure for illnesses such as multiple sclerosis. The cause of MS is still hardly unknown and uh, also my research is not really trying to understand the cause, it's more trying to fix the damage. And I think there the genetic, genetic engineering can really help because what happens in an MS patient is that you start to get your nerve cells being damaged and destroyed and the really bad patients they also have the cell that actually make the nerves, the shielding of the nerves is also destroyed. So with the genetic engineering or using uh, maybe stem cells, we could probably uh, speed up this process and use it to help MS patients, but also a lot of patients with uh, Parkinson or spinal cord injury, which would be a huge uh, advantage. Uh, some people don't like the very idea of genetic engineering. They think that we shouldn't be messing around with the fundamental constituents of people's bodies. Uh, you shouldn't be mixing up genes from one uh, species with another, for instance. And so they oppose it not just on the safety grounds or, or how effective it is, but also they don't like the very idea itself. The Green Party is one group that feels very strongly about the issue. Genetic technologies are very valuable for things like diagnostics, but that they should be kept in the laboratory. Uh, we're comfortable about what goes on in a properly contained laboratory, but genetically engineered organisms should not be let out into the environment, onto our farms and into our food supply. For living organisms out in the environment, they're able to breed, they're able to crossbreed with other organisms, they're able to contaminate other farmers' crops, and we could easily lose our markets and our clean green image uh, which depends on satisfying what our markets want, which is not GE. While many of us prefer our food the way nature intended it to be, genetic engineering in food is a field that's fast developing. Because all it means is you go into a shop and you buy an apple and it's just labelled as being GE. Yeah. But that GE could be any gene. It could be herbicide resistance, it could be improved flavour, it could be improved colour. Um, you know, it could be improved in a way that um, enables the grower to grow more fruit, better fruit, but the gene may not actually be functional in the apple fruit itself. The New Zealand Food Safety Authority works to ensure all food products are correctly labelled. Basically the GM food labelling provisions allow consumers to make purchasing decisions based on the actual content of the food. They're, they're not intended to provide any information about the safety of the product. Um, the safety has already been determined prior to that prior to the food being sold. If, if a food contains genetically modified material, DNA or protein of genetically modified source, then it must be labelled as such. There are, are some exemptions that apply. For instance, there's an exemption for the unintended presence of an approved variety up to a level of 1%, and that's there where a manufacturer has made best endeavours to avoid gene material, but through um, unintentional circumstances it is in the food. But again, that is for an approved variety, so its safety has already been determined. The Environmental Risk Management Authority is another body that monitors genetic activity in New Zealand. 
Um, genetic modification covers a very wide range of technologies. So it's things like deleting a gene or inserting a gene or maybe modifying a gene in an organism. Now doing that might change the characteristics of an organism in such a way that it has different characteristics. And those characteristics might cause environmental impacts. For example, it might make a crop more weedy and likely to cause problems. So we need to make sure we check those effects and ensure that we don't um, cause environmental impacts. There's a lot of research going on, but so far there are no live GMOs in the New Zealand environment. So there's been no what we call a release to the environment. There have been no applications for releases to the environment. The research that's going on in laboratories is very broad and very widespread. So I'd say it's quite an active area of research, but so far nothing's been commercialised. While genetic engineering is still mainly at the research stage in New Zealand, it's an issue that's set to become very relevant in the future. I think it's a very emotive issue and people think that you're playing God, for example, and that's a big issue that, you know, hits at people's fundamental belief systems and that's a hard one to get around. Obviously it is a complicated matter and um, how far people should go in finding out about these things depends very much on the other things they have going on in their lives.